Hi, I'm Amy Bodkin, Special Needs Consultant at a Charlotte Mason Plenary. Today I'll be talking with you about Principle Number 7 of Charlotte Mason's 20 Principles. This is part of the free 20 Principles study available at a Charlotte Mason Plenary's website. Rachel already did a video on Principle Number 7. Make sure you catch that one. She digs deep into what Charlotte wrote about Principle Number 7. I tend to break the principles up, especially when thinking about special needs children, into three different categories. Physical, the body. Mental, the mind. And then the spirit or soul, that part of you that's not your body and not your mind and what gives you value as a person. Um, with regards to the first eight principles, I tend to think of those as the physical principles because it tends to discuss how we treat our children physically. How do we act out our caring for our children? We've already talked about how um, education is an atmosphere, a discipline, and a life. And we talked about atmosphere already. Now it's time for principle number seven, which focuses on education is a discipline. Number seven, by education is a discipline, we mean the discipline of habits formed definitely and thoughtfully, whether habits of mind or body. Physiologists tell us of the adaptation of brain structures to habitual lines of thought, i.e. to our habits. Developing habits is talked about in a lot of Charlotte Mason circles, and a lot of times people like to break it down into a list of habits that should be developed. And Charlotte did include many examples of good positive habits to develop, but that's not what's at the root of the principle. The principle is mostly talking about being mindful of the habits you develop, of the ruts you are making in the neural pathways of the brain. When we do things over and over again, we develop the habits, and it's it's actually within our brain, like ruts in a trail. Um, and we want to make sure that those habits and ruts are serving us in a positive way and not causing more harm. But not everyone is going to benefit from the same exact habits. We'll do things differently based on what we have to work with, what our environment is. Um, in country, other countries, sometimes children leave their shoes by the door before coming inside. Whereas in other countries, children keep their shoes on. So it depends on where you live, your family, your environment, and also on your unique set of skills and where you are developmentally as to what habits are best going to serve you or work for you. And so it's being thoughtful about the habits that we develop ourselves and also with our children. How do we do things? How can we make things work in a way that will be more effective? Maybe we have huge meltdowns over putting on shoes because of sensory issues. Well, maybe we develop the habit of keeping the shoes in the car. <laughs> and then that way, they're a little more distracted when we get somewhere and then we're putting on the shoes instead of trying to do it before we leave the house. Most people might think that putting on shoes before you leave the house would be the best idea. And maybe it is for most people, but that doesn't mean it's gonna work for every family. And so that's what we want to be mindful of. What habits will work for you? Um, and there's different ways of organizing even academic materials. I did much better when I organized my college courses by color so that I knew which books to grab at a quick glance when heading out the door. And that's not necessarily something someone else has to do, but it works for me and it helps support my executive functioning. And that's what we want to do. We don't want to look like everybody else. We want to be mindful of ourselves, who we are in this moment, what will work for us, what will help us. So what I'd like you to do is try to take an outside look at your own home and your own family. Try to identify areas that maybe are frustration areas where things aren't working quite as smoothly. And then brainstorm what are different ways that we could address that issue and develop a habit that might really work for us, a way of doing things that will make life easier. 
And as we grow, we do develop more personal habits, like learning to pay attention better. But that's not something that we teach or train. It's something that we do naturally as we continue learning and developing, as we sit down to our lessons and keep them short to where we can be successful. A habit doesn't develop well when we're constantly failing at it. We've got to find what will work that we can be successful at. And as we become more successful, we can grow and become even more successful. Don't forget to check, click the bell so that you will hear about the new videos coming out from a Charlotte Mason plenary and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll be joining you next time for a discussion of principle eight. Thanks.